supposed to do with the restaurant stocks now that the group is facing so much competition and they've been absolutely hammered? The entire industry has been caught in a vicious sell-off. I mean, Sinai, Cracker Barrel, Red Robin Gourmet, I didn't mention a bunch of them. Feels like nothing in the group is working unless there's a special situation like Yum that's unlocking value. Consider Chipotle, which is still struggling to find its footing ever since the company was hit with a string of E. coli outbreaks last year. Shares of the burrito chain have plunged 44% last year. How about Fiesta Restaurant Group? We just talked about them all the time, FRGI. Parent company of, po of Pollo uh, Tropical and Taco Cabana, which has dropped 35% last year. Uh, how about Zoe's Kitchen, Z-O-E-S, the Mediterranean-themed fast casual chain with 190 locations. Here's a fast-growing former darling uh, that's fallen out of favor pretty dramatically in the last few months. When Zoe's reported a uh, little less than two months ago, the numbers came in a bit weaker than expected, and the stock got obliterated. But maybe something else is at work here. Zoe's is a high-quality operator with a great concept. If it can't beat the numbers, then we got to ask, is there something bigger going on in the restaurant space that we should be worried about? Has something changed when it comes to the Americans' desire to go out for dinner? After all, the entire restaurant cohort has been put through the meat grinder. Let's get a read with the, it, about this whole industry with John Casimus. He's the former CEO of Zoe's Kitchen, who took his parents' single restaurant in 1995 to regional brand before stepping down as CEO in 2008. To be sure, he no longer has a day-to-day -day role in the company, but I think you'd be a fan of knowledge on the issues that I just went over. Mr. Casper's welcome to Mad Money. Good to Thanks, see you, sir. Man. Have a seat. Appreciate that. All right. Well, you heard the litany and you know the business. Um, what the heck is happening? I think several things. First and foremost, there's a lot of competition. There's been tremendous amounts of small, fast startups mom and pop restaurants in each market. And I think it's growing at a pace that there's not as many diners as there are more seats now for diners. That's one thing. Food trucks, discounting, right, right. people stayed at home. And then I think really, honestly, you know, household incomes have not increased in the last seven years. There's less cash available for that. And then really, honestly, for me, the election, I think, is having a big, a big impact. And I think people are really scared right now. They don't know what's going on. No, I talk about that because I, I get the same. I hear that on we that I, basically people uh, the discourse is very negative and makes you, I think, makes every American feel uh, about what Jimmy Carter used. I'll use his word. Melez. There's a melez. Absolutely. And w what happens? We're going to have to find out. It'll take some time. But the thing that's important to me and when it talks about the restaurant space is that the nimble brands, the brands that can adjust. And I think fast casual is really poised for that because the lack, the, the small amount of people it takes to run a restaurant relative to a full dining, well, right. casual dining theme like an Applebee's or a big company like Cheesecake Factory, they're smaller numbers of employees so they can cut back when times get slow mm -hmm. and they can still remain some sort of profitability to weather the storm. Okay, uh, how about the minimum wage for a small place? Does it matter? I think there's always people trying to figure out exactly how to always bend those rules. They're not right. really bend the rules, but point. they, they if it's a certain time limit, people work, and then there's indicators that kick in that cost you more money. You simply are going to work people for smaller amounts of time. Okay. Uh, restaurants uh, do compete against uh, making food at home. The supermarket, the prices have come down. That's a very unusual thing. Can people actually make that pivot to people say, you know what, it's so much cheaper to stay at home. I'm going to go cook something and go out? I think those times are past. Okay. I mean, right, there's, there's nobody's going back. People are too busy, dual income families, right. soccer, baseball year round, all those different things. And it's just cheaper to go to a fast casual restaurant to have dinner than it is to cook it at home. Well, did too many uh, companies get too much capital? I mean, is it possible that the venture capitalists just backed a lot of change that they shouldn't have? I mean, not everybody's going to make it, are they? Everybody is not going to make it. And that's, that's a really key point. Then you look at it and who's going to make it over the next right. several years, the ones that have the strongest brand. Listen, when people start companies today, what happened to the days when it was nothing wrong with having a quarter or two of bad results because <laughs> you're, you're building right. a big brand. You're building something. Chick-fil-A, right, right. Truett Cathy was one of my mentors. Okay. And I sat in his office and he always had a, he had a thing on the side behind the, the couch that said, there's no obstacle too high if you climb with care and confidence. And he looked at me and he said, this is back at the beginning of Zoe's Kitchen. He said, don't grow too fast. And so people are being knocked for not growing but fast But that's enough. a great point. I mean, I look at Shake Shack, and I know Wall Street is, is just constantly wants them to put up more stores than maybe they should be able to. Well, that's, that's a whole other loaded gun there right. because they're in a, uh, a segment of the fast casual restaurant space that is so there's so many competitors, even from down to QSR and all the way up right. through. It's very difficult to compete. All right, well, the, in the time left, what would an investor at home, what the, should they stick with a concept like they like a Zoe's because it's Mediterranean cash? You know, it's, a, it's fresh, Mediterranean. Should they just stick with it through thick and thin, or is that just too dicey to even do anymore? 
there's no question, if you're going to be invested in food and then you're going to be invested in, in a, a small cap stock where you've got potential for big growth over right. a period of time, there's no question in my mind, Zoe's Kitchen is the only one to be invested in. Strong loyalty, great real estate. Their locations are less susceptible to economic downturns than others. The brand has a cult following and their runway for growth is unlimited. There are not that many that are like that, or is that, you I mean, obviously you're familiar well, with Well, I think we're first, here. I think that Zoe's Kitchen, that brand is a first mover, like Chipotle right. was okay. and like Panera Bread was in each of their segments of the fast casual. And Zoe's has done that with Mediterranean, fresh right. homemade food. And if there are 200 units a day, and that's a very small company, Chipotle went public at 300, Zoe's went public at 100. And so. There's room. There's room. All right, fair enough. I think that's a great analysis. This group has really been tough, though. That's John Casimus. He's the former CEO of Zoe's Kitchen. They have money to back it the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.